right here ready to plant and we've got a beautiful machine here that we're hopefully going to figure out how to use now uh, first thing I've, I guess is the question why are we gonna use machine transplanting we could also do manual planting so why are we doing this Lee well we're trying to act in as a contemporary way as possible and I think uh, labor supplies in Asia are declining uh, everywhere as, as the whole continent develops and systems to use less labor are evolving as we speak and one way of using less labor is still the transplant because there's benefits in transplanting but to do it mechanically. Now yeah. this, this sort of machine was invented in Japan how long ago? Ah, 40 years ago? Probably 20, 30 years ago at least, yeah. And it's been, uh, these kind of things have been in use in Japan, Korea, and maybe uh, China. But what we are seeing in recent years uh, is that it's now moving on to, into other countries, uh, in, in India, Southeast Asia, and it's mainly because of labor shortage. And it's actually a business opportunity, not just for the companies selling the machines, but also for small farmers who then become uh, small entrepreneurs. So providing this as a service, as a planting service to other farmers. And even for seedling growers, you know, because you need to have uh, seedlings grown in a, in a precise manner. You can see this here if you can zoom in. I don't know if you guys can do this. Yeah? So you need these nice uh, seedling mats here. So you can see how uniform the seedlings are and it's, of course it requires a special way of growing them so that you can pull them off in these muds and cut them into nice strips which you can then feed into this machine. Yeah. And this is actually a new business, yeah, even for women. We see this in some places in, in southern India, I've seen it. So women becoming seedling growers, selling the seedlings then to a machine operator or service provider. So what we are basically trying to do this year here is a labor saving cost efficient precise crop establishment technology that is as close as it gets and maybe even better than manual transplanting right but but wait a minute mm. last year we were talking about exactly the same things and off we went up to just over our knees in mud broadcasting so what's changed why 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 this sudden change of heart well, because I think uh, we, we will get uh, uh, a more precise uh, crop establishment with this as a safer technology to start with under our conditions here with that kind of uh, heavy and soft soil. And we may still try something else uh, in the next crop with more uh, dry direct seeding. Your hand seeding, uh, you wouldn't want to gas so fast, right? That's right, that's right. So we've been using a carabao drawn mechanical transplant. Just, just give us some more, just give us some more grain to eat. Yeah, we're nearly finished and um, by and large I would say it works but it is actually quite hard work uh, to walk even behind this machine because uh, anytime you hit a, a deep uh, muddy spot uh, you have to make sure that the wheels don't spin off and we've had a number of uh, patches there with standing water where basically it's so muddy that the seedlings uh, because they're so small disappear yeah so but uh, here is a place where uh, it looks quite okay. So you can see pretty good spacing and seedlings uh, that hopefully uh, will uh, recover and uh, grow quickly. Uh, but uh, it has taken us a while and the machine is, uh, the engine died a couple of times on the way, the planting mechanism got stuck once in a while. So it requires uh, some skill, I would say. 
Of course, uh, uh, a trained operator, a professional, would have done this much faster and probably better than we did. But, uh, well, we got it planted. Now let's see how it grows. So.